Well, good morning, everybody. Danny back from Deep South Homestead. Guys, we're back over here with the farm all cub. Uh, it's time. The corn's about eight inches tall. It's time to fertilize it, uh, put some nitrogen to it, and to uh, set the plows up on it now. I took the uh, layoff sweeps off of it, and I've installed a solid square bar that goes all the way across underneath it here for my foot, fertilizer foot to hook to. Now I've got to adjust the fertilizer foot and get it set at the right distance. Now this two by four you see laying under the cub here, what I've learned is rather than trying to eyeball everything, I set this two by four in the center of the cub. The cub is made to plow 42 inch rows right now. And at 21 inches is the center of that 2x4 from the center of this tire here to the center of that 2x4 is 21 inches from both sides. And I did the same thing in the back. This way it takes the guesswork out of putting these plows on here. Now I want these plows to be about 16 inches that I'm going to put on here uh, from the center of the tractor to the edge of this 6 inch half shovel here. And we're going to take this sweep off right here, this half sweep, and we're going to put this half shovel on. And one of the things I was telling you guys about these farm all cubs, a crescent wrench and a hammer, really all you need. And you don't have to do a bunch of hard hammering or anything like that. You can just take that thing and tap that right there really easy. Falls out. <laughs> that simple. We can move this out of the way. Put it over here. And remember I told you when you're handling these here, you want to make sure you use the short shank, number 16, uh, plow shank. Number 16 is the only one that'll fit these cubs. I've already made the mistake of getting the wrong one. So, And you just take this and slide it up through here like so. Now what we want to do, we want to make sure we have our half shovel sitting perfectly square with the tractor here and right now I'll just that's all you got to do to hold it in there till we get our adjustment now I wanted 16 inches over because what that does is when I go to plow this it'll it won't cover my corn up it'll throw dirt to the corn but it won't cover it up and I might I might go to 14 inches it just depends on what we end up with here now right here, I'm actually 14 and a half. So I think I'm going to stick with 14 and a half inches because I, I'm going to start off with that. Let's put it that way. I will plow one row to see how it does throwing dirt toward the corn and at what speed I've got to run at. Of course, the faster you go, the more dirt it will throw over. Now I don't have a, I don't have the layoff discs and stuff like that it takes to bed up things and throw dirt to them uh, the rotary ones i don't have all that for my cub all i have right now is these half shovels and i also want to be able to have my sweeps in the back wipe out my tractor tires as i plow because the first time i didn't do that because all i was doing was aerating the soil these are already set up back here and what i do is i come back here from the point down these are about six inches off the ground. Both of them is right at six inches off the ground. What I'm going to do is come back up here. I don't want this half shovel to be six inches off the ground. Now what I'm showing is actually seven, which is not really a bad deal. Uh, but I'm going to drop it just a little bit. And all you got to do is just tap that. You don't have to, it ain't enough to mess up the threads or anything on it. So I'm going to drop it down to right there. Let's see if that... Six inches. Make sure we keep that sitting good and square. That's what I wanted. Now all you got to do is tighten this nut back down. I haven't had a chance yet to swap out all the nuts with square ones yet. I still have the the hexagon ones on here. Okay, that's all it takes to set one of these. 
I might want to also add, I went ahead and mounted my other new tire on this side right here. Uh, now, what I haven't done, uh, the other ones were full of water. I haven't filled these with water yet because I've got the 135 pound weights on the back of it right here. I'm going to see if without having the water in it, it will still do a good job plowing because when I have all the water in them, they're so heavy, if the ground is the least bit wet, it really wants to sink down bad because these tires are narrow. So I'm going to try it without the water, and if it looks like it's going to spin bad or something like that, then I will put the water in them. I gotta come out with it. We can get this. I gotta watch my chain system here. Okay, um, I'm technically only 14 inches there. What you got to make it? 14 and 14, and I got that one's 14 and a half over there. So you got to go half. I still got to go another half an inch. I just got to watch and make sure I don't get too close right in here with anything. I don't want to damage nothing. So we are 14. Oh, I know what I see what it is. Fine. There we go. Now. Had my plow turned. Yes, 14 and a half. Okay. Have a square nut on. The store don't get a lot of these square nuts in. So when they do, I like to swipe them up as soon as they come in. Now, we're going to be putting some nitrogen to our corn, so let me loosen this up. If I get it too loose, the plow will just fall out of it, and I'm trying to keep that from happening. I don't want that nitrogen too close to the corn, but I, I want it close enough that it, it's got to go, I call it going grocery shopping. I want the roots to go looking for it. Now. The problem is, if this is way lower than this, what happens is dirt will run over the back of this back here and fall down in here and stop this up. So I've got to actually pick this up a little bit. Okay, now I want the fertilizer to be... I don't want it to be much there. I want it about six inches because I want it to be a little bit deeper than... Okay, I think that's going to do it right there. And I got to make sure I'm not running too, too crooked on it there. All right, we got to put our fertilized tube on here. And you have to take this off. I don't figure that out. Everything's a process. Got a little carriage bolt. I'm going to be switching these carriage bolts out to galvanized. Because I've learned uh, it doesn't rust up from the fertilizer and all going through it.
I can get a stainless steel wing nut. I can get a galvanized wing nut, I believe. If I can, I'll... I can't believe this wind today. <laughs> okay. This will go right in the top of that down there. I can get it laid down in there. If them wing nuts is not turned just right, Okay, this is going to slide right down in there, and this little lip thing back here rides right on the back of that there and holds it in there. This part right here, this little pin here, rests inside these hooks right here, and then this gear meshes up with that gear, but you have to be careful. Now, this will fall off of there. So... Then this folds forward. And you have what's called a J-bolt right here. You get this thing undone where the washer will come down. That J-bolt's what holds this. And I kind of rock mine back and forth a little bit until I get a good seat on it. Make sure it's not just banging around there everywhere. Okay, and we have that. And you have a flow gate, which is right here. This is a flow gate right here. And it's controlled by a wing nut out here in a lever. Now, normally this gear would be out here where this hole is and this would not be in the way. But because I don't have the seat attachment on it and it has this long chain on it, we have to be really careful because if we move it up, the wing nut will actually hit the wheel. So I want about that adjustment right about there so I'm going to have to kind of work with this a little bit to make sure that wing nut doesn't get into anything here. Okay, we've got it where it's not touching anything right here. Now, it's close, but it's not touching, and we're good to go. The flow gate's adjusted where I want it at to put out the right amount of ammonium nitrate or sulfate. You can't buy nitrate anymore because of dope heads, but uh, we've got this thing ready. Now... We gotta get some ammonia out of one of my bags up under here and get some ammonia in here so that we can uh, take this baby out there and see if we can get this corn plowed. I hear some hard pieces like that right there. This is a problem you run into with this stuff. It'll stop that thing up where it won't. They won't break up. They won't break up. Nothing out there. We'll start off with this amount right here. Hopefully this another big one come out. These hard clumps of ammonia, you gotta break them up. Some of them won't. Look at that. This is a problem with what you're getting in fertilizer today. Now, I know we got an agitator on there, but there we go. I think we got most of it.
right, this is one of the things here I was going to show y'all. Don't ever let this foot down unless you're moving. Because what's going to happen, I'm going to show you here. Uh, let me find where my... This tube fills up with your fertilizer and what happens, I actually plowed a whole row of corn They got no fertilized. So I've got to go back and replow that row because I made a mistake and didn't put my foot down. I put my foot down before I actually started. And, and that's something you don't ever supposed to do. Thank you. 
we've got all the corn now, we have the nitrogen put to it. Next thing is we're going to take this hopper off of here and we're going to pour what's left back in the bag because of the price of this stuff today, we're not wasting any of it if we can help it. Guys, we're not putting this on here to use right now. What we're fixing to do is we are fixing to close this back up, tighten that back down. We're fixing to go run, turn the water on, and we're fixing to give the cub a bath, and we're going to wash all this stuff out really, really good because ammonium sulfate will rust everything up, and we don't want anything getting rusted up. So. We're going to go flip the water on, and we're going to take this baby up here, and we're going to give it a bath. This right here is one of the most important parts. I keep all mine painted because if there's paint, the fertilizer can't get to the metal. All right, guys, this is one of the most important parts right here, this and this. This gear comes out of this. It just sits down in this right here. Once all this dries, I'll come back. I'm going to coat this with oil, oil all down in here. 
I used some diesel fuel in all this uh, to keep it. Now it's painted, but it is starting to show a little bit of rust signs on it. I want to make sure that I, I'll probably, once it dries real good, I'll probably paint it again just because that's who I am. I don't want the fertilizer to get a hold to it because you don't use it that many times a year. And this gear here just sits right back down in there and it locks on those two pins right there. We washed out our seed tube here. We're gonna let that dry out good. Get all the water out of it. Make sure there's no fertilizer left in it and it'll dry out pretty quick. We'll hang it up, let it dry. And we washed the tractor out. We washed where the fertilizer distributor set, I mean the fertilizer distributor set on it. We washed off all of our plows up in where all the bolts go and all that, washed all the dirt out of that. The life of these tractors is keeping it clean. Now, once everything dries good, I will go back and grease everything. I grease after I finish using, not before I finish using, because the next time I get ready to use it, I don't have to worry about hunting up a grease gun and all that. I can just jump on it and go. That's just, that's the way I do things. some of the fuel down in the carburetor so that it's not sitting full of uh, gas all the time. I leave a little bit in it, not much. I do not use ethanol gas in this tractor at all. I use only non-ethanol. So I hope today that you've enjoyed watching the plow, the Danny corn, fertilize it. Now we have, we're not technically bedding it up. When it gets to be about 12 inches tall, I'll put the disc killers on it and I will actually bed it up at that time. My babies are calling me. They want to be fed. So once again, thank you guys from Deep South Homestead. <laughs>